Hey everyone, welcome back. And if you're new here, I'm Angela from Bold Living Programs. I support parents with bringing ease and joy to parenthood, especially navigating the early toddler years. So if you'd like to join our Mindful Mamas Network, click that subscribe button below. Today, I'm going to share with you guys some ideas of how we can calm ourselves and not take our anger out on our little ones, regardless of whatever the situation is. And I'm going to share with you guys my experience and how my five-year-old drew all over the wall. So on this particular day, uh, it was right before bedtime. So I went for my shower and Aurora went into her room for some independent play. After I had a shower and got ready, I went into her room to read her a book. And then all of a sudden I saw markings like all over the wall above her bed area next to her dollhouse like going up the wall it was not just a little bit and i was stunned and i asked her who did this and aurora said i did and i said with what and she said with the crayon this one little crayon that was hanging around in her dollhouse. I don't even know why or where it got, how it got there. And I asked her, why? And she said, I wanted to play tic-tac-toe. And so I walked out of the room. I went and got a cloth and the spray and wipe. And I walked into the room and I handed it to her. And she went over to the wall and cleaned it up. It went to clean it up. I said, we don't uh, draw on walls. Here you go and then she proceeded to wipe the wall but it wasn't coming off and so then i had a turn and i started to scrub the wall as well and it wasn't coming off at all and i was scrubbing and scrubbing a bit harder and then a bit harder and all of a sudden like my blood was just boiling inside me and i could feel my anger just welling up and the thoughts that were going on inside my head was like oh crap, like now I have to paint this wall, I need to peel a bit off, take it to Bunnings, like as if I have, you know, not enough things to do already that now I have to go and do this other thing. You know, what was she thinking? And so on and so forth. Then Aurora said something, I, I don't know what she said. And I could feel that it was just about to come out. And I said, Aurora, can you please go to mummy's room so I don't yell at you? And she said, okay, mummy. But I want you. And I said, Aurora, please just go to my room because I, just, I don't want to yell at you. And she said, okay, mommy. And then she went to my room. And, you know, I'm still there trying to scrub this wall thinking like, man, what am I going to do? And like one second later, she walks right back through the door. Mommy, I want you. And I was like, okay, you can sit on the beanbag and read mommy a book because mummy still needs to calm her body. And she said, okay. And so she starts to read me this book and I think, okay, let me Google. And so I Googled and just so that you guys know, um, baking soda takes crayon off like this. <laughs> just a you know, secret bonus tip there. Um, so I left the room, I went to go get the baking soda and I came back to her door, uh, to the door and my baby, oh, she was there, she had the spray and the wipe and she's really wiping the wall and I just stood there for a moment and I just observed and I smiled and, you know, in that moment I was so present to her being able to understand what happened to be able to process everything that was going on for her taking responsibility for her own actions and really trying to clean up the mess that she made and then she turned around and said mommy it's not coming off and i said that's okay baba let's try this option and so i got some of the bicarb soda and i wiped it off and like magic it just started coming off with even just the lightest touch and so then she took over for a bit and she wiped some and then I did some as well because it was getting close to bedtime. So really just wanted to get it done quickly. Um, and she kept reading the book to me. And that was it. And 
I just reminded her later on that we write on papers or cardboards and everything that she needs to do writing is in the craft cupboard. And she said, okay, mommy. And that was it. So why is it important that in this moment, I didn't yell at her? Did you know that yelling produces similar results to a young child experiencing physical violence? So these results include increased anxiety, increased stress and depression, and it also ends up increasing that negative behavior as well. And I'm going to assume that those results are not the results that you're committed to. So what is important here? What was important was that I gave Aurora the space to be able to process her emotions and be able to get understanding about her behavior and the situation that happened. That processing and that understanding and learning would not have been possible with an anxious brain. When a brain is anxious, there are only three automatic responses that can happen. Fight, flight, and freeze. So when you yell at your child, they will either yell back and then be justified in their behavior, so no learning happens. They will run away or they will freeze and shut down and their brain will shut down. In all three of these incidences, no learning takes place. And it is almost impossible for an anxious mind to think or process anything. Ideas of how we can calm ourselves and regulate our emotions. Be curious, understand what it is that they wanted to achieve and why, and then show them how they can achieve this in a way that aligns with the agreements of your own house. For example, if you live in a rental property, then the agreement that you have is that we don't damage the walls. Or if you have your own home, you might have a particular wall that you might draw on. In our home, we draw on papers or cardboard or boxes, anything that's inside the craft cupboard. Number two, getting in touch with your internal dialogue. Now, I'm not sure if you're aware but how we feel is directly correlated with the thoughts we're having about the particular situation. And it's not the situation itself that is making you feel a particular way, but rather how we're interpreting that situation. So some good questions to ask yourself in these moments are, what things am I saying about myself? What things am I saying about my child? What things am I saying about the situation? And then challenging those thoughts. So some of the thoughts that I was thinking was, she should know better, she's five. What was she thinking? And when I challenged these thoughts, I asked myself some questions like, should she know better? Why? Because she's five. And that's only an assumption. And assumptions are damaging because you're acting on an opinion and not actually on the truth. So. Let's say, for example, your child goes to a daycare where they have an upright chalkboard that's all along one side of the wall. Have you seen these ones? And they're really large, you know, lots of kids can go over there and they can all draw all over this particular wall. Now, all of a sudden, it seems understandable why that could be a particular thought process for a child. And secondly, a child's thought process is so different from how we process our thoughts. So in this instance, the thoughts were, I found a crayon. I want to play tic-tac-toe. Here's a place where I can play tic-tac-toe. So then how can I get angry if this is how they're built? I would never get angry for a fish swimming in the water, would I? Another one of the train of thoughts that was coming up for me was all of the extra work that I now thought that I had to do. So painting the wall, peeling off a bit, going and color matching it at Bunnings and going and buying paint and all of that, all the rest of that. But like I mentioned before, it's those thoughts that were having my blood boil inside rather than the actual situation that was going on right now, which is that I'm just wiping a wall. So how can we release this pressure? Well, first of all, I had to get off the train and interrupt those thoughts. It's those thoughts that are actually making you angry. And then you yell to release the pressure. It's like a pressure cooker. And unless you release that pressure and interrupt those thoughts, it's inevitable that you're going to blow your lid and lose control. 
There are so many other ways that you can release pressure without yelling. Here are a couple of calming techniques that I used in this particular instance. So the first one was the five senses grounding technique, which is simply using your five senses. So eyes, ears, nose, mouth, and touch to be able to get out of your head and into reality. The next video is going to be the five senses grounding technique. So click that subscribe button to stick around for that video. So in this particular situation, I didn't actually need to use the entire technique to be able to release um, some of that pressure build up. So the two things that I simply used was when I came back into the room and I stood in the door frame and I just watched Aurora for a moment and I just observed her standing there with the, ra the cloth, wiping the wall and spraying it again and then wiping a bit more. And I stood and observed just for a little bit extra than I even needed to, to be able to allow that pressure to dissipate. And the second thing was that when she was sitting on the beanbag reading me that story, I was listening to the actual story rather than listening to my thoughts. So I could get out of my head and into the present moment. The second technique that I used was changing my physical body. So my body language or my behavior. And what studies show is that when you alter your physical body, so this could be your posture, it could be your facial expressions, or it could even be where you're standing, your position. What this does is it dramatically alters and impacts the way that you're feeling. And that allows us to be able to release some of that pressure. So in this particular instance, when I went back into the room and I saw Aurora rubbing the wall, instead of walking straight in, I just leaned against her door frame. You know, I had my hand on my chin. This is already a really relaxed posture. So already starting to release some of that pressure. And I just smiled because there was a lot of things to be happy about in that moment. I was observing her taking responsibility for her actions. I was observing her cleaning up her mess. I was observing that she was learning and growing from this situation. And it was beautiful. So thank you everyone for watching. I hope this video has been of value to you. If it has, definitely give me a thumbs up in the comments below. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button to stick around. Bye.